Hi, today I'd like to talk about Bogota, Bogota, Colombia. I just got back from Bogota and I thought I'd share uh, some of my experiences, some of the places I've visited, so that if you decide to go to Bogota, Colombia, you know what you should see or what you can see. Bogota is set in the Andes at an elevation of 8,612 feet. It is a sprawling capital and cultural center of Colombia. Travelers who tend to stay for less than 90 days only need valid passports for entry. There are no obligatory vaccination requirements. You can arrive by plane at the Aeropuerto Internacional El Dorado. It is a well-run modern airport. Private buses and taxis are plentiful at the airport. Beware that individuals will want to assist you in finding a taxi. That is not necessary. Just go up one flight from the baggage area and you will see many taxis. This will save you some money. Understand that English is not spoken. You will need to learn a little Spanish before arriving in Bogota. Once in your hotel, though, the staff should be bilingual. But when you're outside, Spanish will be usually the only language spoken to you. Bogota is a special city. Any city that shuts down its major roads on Sunday mornings at 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. so that the citizens usually at least half of them, can claim the roads to bicycle, skate, jog, or walk is special. This is called the Ciclovia, and it was started in the 1970s. And today it can have up to 2 million people participating in it on a Sunday. The area called Candelaria, downtown, consists of narrow streets lined with small shops. It is a good area to shop and look for jewelry if one wants to shop for emeralds. Believe me, you can negotiate a good deal. I found some good emeralds and negotiated some good prices. Another place that you may want to go is not too far from Condelaria, or actually in Condelaria. It's the Museo del Oro, the Museum of Gold. It houses designs of gold treasures and religious objects from the Musca and Sinu peoples. One of the highlights is the golden raft created by the Musca people, which portrays the ritual of El Dorado. One of the things that you'll have to get used to is the exchange rate. It's around 2,700 to one. So you will wind up paying more than 19,000 Colombia pesos for a pizza or 1,700 Colombia pesos for a Fanta. Mall shopping is excellent and the malls are modern and actually beautiful. They're not run down as you'll find in many areas of the United States and they're well trafficked. If you want to buy food to take back to your hotel room, there are many bodegas, small markets, and many large supermarkets. Exito is one. In Exito, you'll find anything that you actually need, and it's very upscale. One of the things that you might want to do is go to Cerro de Montserrat. You can take the funicular up to the top of Montserrat for spectacular views of Bogota. And if you'd like to, you can return on the gondola. There are two restaurants on top of Montserrat. The smaller one, my favorite, has an outdoor area in which you can have coffee and sweets while you overlook the mountain scenery. It's really quite nice. 
Now, you'll find yellow cabs everywhere in Bogota. So there's no need to rent a car. People take cabs everywhere in Bogota. Another place that you want to, to visit is the Museo Botero. In this museum, you have paintings by Fernando Botero and many others. It is a must-see. It includes works by Botero, Picasso, and Dali. All were donated by Botero, so Colombians would not have to pay a peso to see them. Now, connected to the Museo Botero is the Casa de la Moneda. And this is where the New World's first gold coins were produced in the early 17th century. Another museum you might want to visit is the Museo de Arte Moderno. It's the Modern Art Museum. It puts on interesting exhibitions and they constantly change. And these exhibitions highlight Colombia and Latin American artists. When I was there to take a look at it, it had some primitive art that was produced by people who had been subject to the terror from rebels. And this block area that you see lists those who have disappeared. Now here you can see the Justice Center and you can see soldiers and policemen in front of the palace. This is in Independence Square. You should take a visit and take a look. Now I stayed at the Sinesta Hotel and it was excellent. The staff responds to your needs graciously and quickly. There's a breakfast that's included in the cost of the room and it's an excellent breakfast. Now the Sinesta Hotel is uh, close to some upscale areas and in that upscale in the upscale areas there are many nice restaurants all you have to do is ask the hotel staff which is bilingual what restaurants you should go to and they will make sure that you will get to a good one one of the things i liked about the sinesta is that it's only two to three minutes away from unicentro which is a gigantic mall. It has everything you can possibly want. And so, no matter what you need, it's a short walk if you've forgotten some sundries or clothes. The hotel is situated in a well-trafficked area. So there are always yellow cabs available, and there is also motorized rickshaws. And you can jump on one of these and be driven around at your own risk. What I have found is the best way to get around Bogota is to hire your own car and your own driver. Here's Adolfo. He drove me around at a fraction of what it would cost to pick up yellow cabs wherever I went. Plus, he had a remarkable understanding of Bogota because he's a native. He's gracious, intelligent, and he's always punctual. So if you want somebody to drive you around and to get you to see Bogota, I'd recommend Adolfo. All you have to do is ask the people at the front desk at the Sinesta who Adolfo is and to ask them to connect you with Adolfo. His vehicle is excellent, large, and not small like most of the yellow cabs that you'll see in Bogota. Another place that you must go to is the Quinta de Bolivar. This is a country estate that was presented to Don Simon Bolivar in 1820. It was built in 1800. It is a beautiful example of a late colonial era house. It is furnished with period pieces and has a beautiful garden of cypress and walnut trees. It is just a short walk from the Quinta to Monserrate. It is also just a short walk 
from the Quinta to the University of the Andes. The last place that I recommend that you go see is Ipequera. This is 25 miles north of Bogota, and it has the Catedral de Sal, or the Cathedral of Salt. This is a cathedral built in a salt mine. It's a good day trip. The Catedral de Sal was originally built in 1951, but due to safety reasons, a new one was rebuilt or started to be rebuilt in 1995. It is an impressive feat of engineering, and it's worth the trip. There are many things that you can see in Bogota, more than I've listed. But what I've listed will give you a good three to four days. And I think that's probably all you need to stay in Bogota. There are other cities like Medellin or Cartagena that you could then fly to and spend some time in. Well, have a good day. I hope this helps.